Matt Britton, the head coach of uh, Cardinal Mooney Boys Soccer. Coach, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Oh, no, thank you for having me out. Coach, another uh, another year, another season at the at the helm too. I'm a, a guess first and foremost. What I'm curious too, how shortly after that game with Crestview did you start thinking about this season? And and with that, let's uh, let's meet the team for this edition of the Cardinals. I mean, we start. I started planning the season the moment after that game ended because that, that left us that left a real sour taste in the mouth. That that's not how we planned uh, last season end. But you know, you got to give credit to Crestview that at the end of the day, they, you know, they they deserved the win. You know, we uh, didn't do what we had to do. So uh, I got with the juniors right after that, and uh, we started to prepare for this season. When you were able to see what Crestview went on to do after that, where was did it make it easier or harder to swallow? Uh, a, I mean, a little bit of both. Um, you know, it's always comforting that you know the team that knocked us out went all the way to the final. But at the same time, you know, there's no reason why the team last year shouldn't have played in back-to-back state championship games. So yes, it was both easy and hard to swallow at the same time. But you know, I, I'm. We can you know hold our head up high and say we went out to the state finalists. So that was one of the lone bright spots of last season. You look at this team though. What were what are some of the things you're you were focusing on in the off season once you got these boys back with the practice? What were some things you wanted to sharpen up on before the start of the season? Definitely the mentality. Definitely the team mentality. I, I honestly don't know what it was with uh, last year's team, but there was this just negative vibe that, you know, filtered in through the team and, and the boys had this, a, um, I almost want to say, um, how do I, had this uh, entitled attitude to them that, oh, hey, we, we were state finals last year. Uh, the team things are just going to be given to us. We don't have to work as hard as we did the previous years. And uh, we went right to work at cutting that attitude out. That, that That's the biggest thing, you know, we went back to our, our workman attitude and, and got rid of that just entitledness. When you look inside this locker room, who are going to be some of the players that you really lean on to be vocal and emotional leaders for your team this year? Uh, definitely. We have to look at our uh, three senior captains. Uh, Dante DiGenova, uh, center back, will probably be the heart and soul of the team. I mean, he's coming off a season where he was all region. You know, I think he was one of six people in the area to get that honor. So we we'll definitely have to lean on him. Uh, along with him in the middle is uh, Patrick D'Ambrosio, Antonio Delisio. Uh, we'll have a transfer from Ursuline who only played eight games last year, Alex LaPlante, who will expect big things from him uh, going forward. Uh, Mason Janis should uh, a junior stepping up. Uh, should uh, Nick Nick Pregabon should be looking in good uh, this year. Same with uh, Dominic Graziano. I think you hinted at last year that watch out for this year's upcoming schedule because it was going to be a gauntlet. And boy, oh boy, I'm looking at it. I mean, within the first couple of weeks, you got Crestview, you got Howland, Cuyahoga Falls, uh, Hoban. I mean, looking at this schedule and being the coach too, what are the challenges first and foremost, knowing that you are going to play one of the toughest schedules in the area? But I mean, I got to imagine too that you also are, are excited for this, uh, for the boys to have this opportunity. Oh, I'm always, I want to play the hardest schedule. I mean, that that's one of the things I sit down with my athletic director. I want to play the uh, best teams that we can play uh, because that prepares us because, you know, soccer is different from a lot of other sports, especially football, because everyone makes the playoffs at the end of the season. So that that's where we want to prepare. So we have to play the best teams that we can to prepare us for that. So that's why you out of the gate, we start with Akron Hoban. I think we play Hoban, Crestview, JFK, and then it's, uh, I believe, uh, CBCA, you know, so two of our first four games are against a, um, you know, top division two teams. And then I think we follow it up with Highland. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is what the fourth year under the, under the helm of, of Mooney, correct? That is correct. Yes. This is my fourth year. So this is your first, this is your year where you get to see the, the kids that you had as freshmen be seniors now. Absolutely. Yeah. We, I get to see the growth and may um, see if I actually did a good job with them or not. <laughs> So this is the first time you really get to you know look at the program as a big picture and say how much impact have I had on a kid from freshman to senior year. Uh, when you look at the growth of not just your seniors but your upperclassmen and the, the impact that you think you've had on them throughout the program, what kind of things stand out to you as the things that they've grown in uh, since they've started with you? I mean, a lot of what I, I look at for the impact, it's not even on the field. You know, We look at the leadership. I look at the accountability. I look, are, are they uh, handling uh, their schoolwork? I mean, I mean, we look at... Uh, just the responsibility 
of it all because I, I put a lot on their shoulders. I, I, I don't baby them. I don't I don't take questions from mom and dad or I don't let mom and dad speak for him. I always have the boys speak to me. So a lot of what I look at, it, it's all the off the field. It, it's are we turning these young, the, I mean, these young boys, are, are we preparing them to be men? And, you know, because how many of them are going to go to be professional athletes? Not many. So they're going to be, they have to be prepared for the real world. Follow up. Uh, when we talk to those kids that graduate from your program and if we were to ask them what they took away from being coached by you and what they took away from your program, what would you hope their answer would be? Hopefully it would just be, you know, some accountability. You know, they're able to be responsible and, you know, hold themselves accountable for what they were supposed to do. And what ways have you grown in these four years as a coach is what I'm curious about. I think I've mellowed. <laughs> I think I've mellowed as a as a coach. I'm not a um, uh, I can't go out and run with the boys like I used to back in uh, my Maplewood days. I can't get out and play with them as much. You know, the legs are a, a little tired every now and then. But no, I I do think I've mellowed. I, I've learned to become a, a more a, a better coach. I want to say, in some ways, like I don't. A, um, I've learned to vocalize it a lot better than I have in the past. One of the staples of this team has always been their defense, and, and you've had a couple of defenders that have won first-team all-district in the last couple of years. Uh, how much of a focus do you guys put on the defense of your scheme, and, and how much do you think it's going to be a factor this year? Uh, it's going to be a huge factor, but, you know, the defense isn't just, you know, our four uh, defenders in the back and our goalkeeper. Our, our defense starts from the, the forward. That's our first defender, um, and, and we press the ball throughout. So, no matter where we are, the closest person to the ball always steps to the ball. So, and, and that goes back to the responsibility and the accountability I hold. When you step to the ball, you have to either slow the ball down or, you know, we have to force them into situations the offense doesn't want to go in. So defense is always you know, high on our priority. What can Mooney fans uh, expect the identity of this team to be, if you could describe it this year? I, I would love to say hardworking. I, I would love to say we're going to get back to that hardworking, you know, attitude and, and just that, I don't want to say arrogance, but I want to say just that positive play, you know, that took us to the 2020 state championship game. Uh, so I would love to say a, a positive, hardworking attitude. All right. So I want to get to know you a little bit off, off the field, off the coaching grind. Uh, what are some things that you like to do outside of the sport of soccer that, that like, you know, keep you active and, and uh, keep you having a good time? Uh, well, I mean, obviously my job at UPS keeps me very active. Uh, but outside of soccer, I mean, it's still all about soccer. I'm a massive Liverpool fan, so anytime they play, I'm always all over it. Any EPL game, I'm always watching it. Because actually, you know, 3 o'clock, I get to watch Liverpool play Crystal Palace here coming up, so I'm pretty excited about that game. Do you find yourself still learning about the game, watching the professionals? Oh, absolutely. Oh, man, like, absolutely. Uh, what, what do you think the last time, last time that you've watched one of those games and took like a note and said, that, that's something I can use? Uh, anytime. I mean, you can always learn from anything. And, and that's, you know, the open minded attitude I, I like to have whenever I watch any game. It doesn't even have to be professional. It could be another high school game. It could be a college game or whatever I happen to be watching. You always want to watch it with an open mind and see what you can adapt to put into your team. You have a great staff and we're going to let you highlight them in a little bit. But what I want to know, if, if you could have anyone from the soccer world, anyone on your coaching staff, who would you pick? I mean, obviously, it's got to be Jurgen Klopp. Liverpool's head coach. I mean, to me, he's the best coach in the world. I mean, I know everyone wants to argue that Pep Guardiola is, but you look at the development that the players have under Jurgen Klopp. I mean, he, he buys average players and makes them world class. How did you become such a big Liverpool fan? Like, how did you fall into that? Um, you know, it, it's I got into soccer, you know, around 04, 05, and I remember watching the Champions League on a, um, ESPN. And they always had Liverpool on, and that's just how. And Steven Gerrard at that time was my favorite player. And then they purchased a player from Spain named Fernando Torres, who was my favorite player, still is my favorite player. And that's how I just became a massive Liverpool fan. Who has influenced you the most as a coach in your coaching style? Uh, probably Jurgen Klopp, to be honest, even when he was at Dortmund. I mean, just, just how he plays, the passion that he coaches with. You see him on the sideline. It's just, you know, and just the uh, – you know, almost the father-like figure he is to the players. So always put a go, give him a big hug, put his arm around him, even when you know mistakes happen. He's just always, you know, he's just such a positive influence. 
I'm sure coaching takes a lot of energy out of you. What uh, What do you like to put in your What would you like to put in your stomach after a game? What's your favorite post game meal? You know what? I don't know. Usually, I, it depends on the game. Sometimes I I really don't eat after because you know I go right back thinking of what could have uh, what we could have done, especially if it's a loss or you know an unfavorable outcome. It's always go right to the drawing board right after that. Uh, normally, if we can, you know, I'm looking maybe some pizza, burger. What uh, What's your favorite memory off the field with the boys that you've been able to coach? Bus rides, you know, practice, things like that. <laughs> I, uh, um, a lot of it is the practice, just the, uh, just the family environment that we have. I think I had a, I had a player two years ago that uh, described the team as a brotherhood. And it's just, you know, that the players look at it at that, you know, I mean, we're always goofing around on the bus and I, I mean, not on the bus, but, you know, everyone, we goof around in practice. I let them have their time. You know, so it's not, it's just, it's just a good time. Run us through a typical Cardinal Mooney boys soccer practice. What do you, what does your practices look like? Um, usually they're very, I usually just have it structured before we get there, you know, Boys get there, stretch, warm up on their own. You know, they're supposed to be there by six, stretching, ready to go. Uh, then we'll break into a little technical warm up, and then we'll break into the tactical aspects of uh, what we're looking for on that day. And then we'll usually finish with a uh, full sided game, emphasizing what we worked on. You look at this too, and I mean, you've been a fan for such a long time. Coach yourself in, in a sense, then. What is, what's some advice and some tips of advice you'd give yourself as a player, knowing what you know now? Knowing what I know now, what advice would I give as a player? Let's see. I would say, um, looking back to my days as a player, I was uh, a little hot headed. So, you know, I would just say, um, try to mellow that down a little bit. And also not, not just to rush things, just, you know, let it come to you, you know, feel the game, get a feel for the game. It doesn't have to be 100 miles an hour forward every time, you know, build into it and uh, just, you know, be patient. A lot of it would be just preach the patience. And a lot of that is the same message that the Cardinal Mooney boys get every day. Did that hothead ever get you carded, carded as a player? Just yellow cards. Just yellow cards. <laughs> That's good. Don't want any of those red ones. Um, no, we don't want those ones. No, before we let you go, I want to give you a chance to uh, give a shout out to your coaching staff, the people that are behind you, and the people that make this Cardinal Mooney program uh, what it is, because we know that you can't do it by yourself. Oh, no, absolutely. I can never do it by myself. I have uh, a great assistant in uh, Michael Morelli, who actually was my high school coach when I was in high school at Liberty. Uh, I brought him along because he's someone that I trust 100%. And that I'll give that to any young coach out there. You want an assistant coach that you trust 100% that you can bounce any idea off them. And they're not just going to tell you what you want to hear, but they're actually going to give you constructive feedback. So uh, I couldn't do what I do without Coach Mike. Um, he's a big influence with everything I do. And then also, I mean, obviously you couldn't do what I do without the players. Um, just, you know, they show up, work hard every day. And then a big shout out has to go to the parents. I mean, this is, one of the best groups of parents I've ever been involved with. I mean, they're so supportive of anything, uh, whether it's putting on team dinners, team trips. Um, they're always, you know, always looking for what they can do to support the team. So it, just the support here is amazing. Coach, we want to thank you so much for your time. And, of course, we wish you the best of luck for this upcoming season. It's going to be a fun schedule to watch, and uh, we hope we get a chance to talk to you again real soon. All right, thank you guys for having me on, and you know, I hope it's as uh, fun as you uh, everyone's expecting it to be.